all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Let's examine problem 95A, a comprehensive variance analysis problem. So this is a kitchen sink kind of a problem. We're gonna be doing material, labor, variable, and fixed overhead variances, all of which we've done in individual problems. Now we're gonna do them all together. The challenge here isn't any greater than any of the individual problems, but it's just finding the information, right? Knowing, okay, which information goes with which variances. So kind of scanning ahead, I kind of read the required. I said, okay, we're gonna have to do drag materials, price and quantity variances. And I laid the, the charts out. So I said, okay, here's materials, labor, variable overhead and fixed overhead. So I've laid out my charts already just to sort of speed up the problem. And as we go through it, I'm gonna start filling in the information that I can uh, in each area. So I'm gonna start, as I, as I read the problem the first time, I'm gonna try to do the material variance as we go. So it says ChemGro produces chemicals for cleaning pools. It sells the chemicals, a powder in four kilogram buckets. The company's standard costs per unit follow. So when I'm thinking about filling in those charts, I'm thinking, okay, a lot of SQ and SP, standard quantity, standard price uh, information is going to be found here. I'm also noting that overhead looks like it's driven by direct labor hours. And so when overhead's driven by direct labor hours, there's gonna be a relationship between our overhead and uh, direct labor variances because they they have the same uh, cost driver. They're both using the same numbers of hours to drive their uh, variance calculations. Okay, it says during the month, the company produced a thousand buckets of chemicals. A bucket is our unit, I suppose. Uh, the following information is known. The company purchased 5,500 kilograms of direct materials at a cost of 21.45. Okay, this is my direct materials AQAP information, right? My actual quantity purchased is 5,500 kilograms. My actual price per kilogram, I don't know, but I know the total is 21.450. So I can kind of work backwards, 21.450. And if I just go 21,450 divided by 5,500, I can work backwards and say, oh, it must have cost me $3.90 per kilogram. So there's my AQ390, or my AQ5500, my AP390, and the total 21,450. Looking at the other side of the AQ, 5,500. My standard price per kilogram. I had seen that, that was $4 per kilogram on my standard cost section there. So 5,500 times four is 22,000. The difference is 550 bucks. Now is this difference favorable or unfavorable? Well, we paid 390, again, we look at what's different and the different thing here is the uh, price. We paid 390 for something we would have thought we should have paid $4 for. So this is favorable, right? We paid less than what we would have expected. Uh, moving over to AQSP, uh, oh, for direct materials used rather, uh, did we use the same amount as we purchased? Well, reading number two, this is where we get it, how much we used. The company had no beginning inventory and had 700 kilograms of material on hand at the end of the year. So we purchased 5,500, we had nothing to begin with, we had 700 kilograms left over, uh, we mustn't have used all that we purchased, right? If we had no kilograms left over, then we used all that we purchased, but we mustn't have used all of the material we purchased. We must have only used 4,800 kilograms. Again, we purchased 5,500 kilograms, but we had 700 left over. Our actual quantity used here is 4,800. Our SP remains four bucks, 4,800 times four bucks is 19,200. Uh, moving over to SQSP, well, we know our SP 
it's four bucks. Our standard quantity, remember what we're doing here. We're saying, given the actual number of units I made, how much direct material ought to have been used? So given the fact that I actually made a thousand buckets of chemicals, how much material should have been used? Well, we go up to our standard cost and we say it should take five kilograms of material per bucket and we made a thousand buckets. So 5,000, right? Five kilograms of material and we made a thousand buckets. It should take 5,000 kilograms. 5,000 times four is 20,000. Our difference here is 800. And we again look at what's different between the calculations. Four and four are the same, but 4,800 and 5,000 are different. We actually used 4,800 kilograms. We should have used 5,000 based on our standard. We used fewer kilograms than we'd expect. This is favorable. We were very efficient here. So uh, reading on, uh, question I says, the company recently entered into a contract with a new supplier who is eager for their business. Should the company to continue to work with this new supplier or should they look for a new one? I would say absolutely this new supplier looks like a good one. They not only gave us a better price, but when we used their material, we were more efficient than we expected to be. This is a good sign. All else being equal, and we don't know anything else, this is absolutely a supplier we should stick with. Okay, B, direct labor rate and efficiency variance. So let's see, bullet point C is our labor uh, or three rather, uh, the direct labor workforce worked a total of 220 hours. Well, that's my AQ for labor, 220. Uh, and uh, where are we? <laughs> Didn't go up high enough. Uh, and was paid a total of 2640. Okay, so that's the total wages for the month. It's not an hourly rate, but it's the wages I paid my employees for the month. So 2640 divided by 220 gives us a rate of 12 bucks an hour. That's what I actually paid my employees. I paid them 12 bucks an hour. My actual quantity, still 220. My standard price, what do I pay my employees? Well, according to my standards, I only pay them 10 bucks an hour. I pay them way more than my standard. So 220 times 10 is 2200. The difference here is 440 bucks. Is this difference a good di a variance or a bad variance? Well, it's good for the employees, but it's bad for us. We paid them two bucks an hour more than what we were planning. Again, the difference here is not the AQ, it's the price uh, and the hourly rate that I paid my employees was, was higher. So this is an unfavorable variance. The final prong here, the SP remains the same. The SP remains 10 bucks. The standard quantity, I say to myself, given the fact that I made a thousand units, right? That's what I made, a thousand, uh, scroll up, a thousand buckets of chemicals. That's what I actually made. Given that fact that I made a thousand buckets of chemicals, how many hours should it have taken? And here we have it. It's supposed to take 0 0.25 hours. So if I make a thousand buckets and each bucket should take 15 minutes, 0.25 hours, a thousand times 0 0.25, I should have taken 250 hours. 250 times 10 is 2,500. Looking at the difference there, 2,500 to 2,200, we have a $300 variance. Now, is our variance good or bad? Well, the difference is, is not the standard price. The standard price is the same, uh, but the, the AQSQ is different. I don't know why I have my calculator out. I thought I needed my calculator, but I don't. That's kind of silly. I needed my highlighter. Um, and you can see that the actual quantity is different from the standard quantity. I should have used 250 hours to make uh, those buckets. It took me 220 hours. I was efficient. It took me less time than I, I thought it should. So this is good news for my efficiency variance. This is a favorable efficiency variance. All right, well, let's 
read the the sub question. It says the company is experimenting with using more senior staff and fewer junior employees for the month. Was the experiment successful? Oh, okay. So that's why we paid so much more per hour. We were using a lot more of our senior staff and fewer of our junior staff. And we're thinking, look, if I use more experienced staff, they'll be more efficient. And they were, but the cost of paying them outweighed the efficiency gain. And again, this is in absence of other information. If the question might tell us some more detail that might change my mind here, but just looking at the data that's in front of me, I would go back to the old way. I would say, look, my, uh, my more senior employees, they're more efficient, but the, the, the efficiency gains are outweighed by the cost gains of, of having them. So I would go back to the old labor mix if it was up to me. Okay, let's move on to variable overhead. Um, so variable overhead, something interesting here. If, as is the case here, variable overhead is driven by direct labor hours, our quantity will be the same as direct labor hours. So when I did my direct labor variance, my actual quantity of variable uh for variable overhead is the actual number of hours. And the actual number of hours is 220. The standard number of hours, just the same calculation. I, I made 1,000 units. It should take me 0 0.25 hours per unit. So it should take me 250 hours. So it's, it's really very similar. My actual price for overhead, let's see, variable overhead of 1050 was incurred. So I don't know the actual price per, per unit or per hour, but I do know the total price was 1050. Uh, let's figure out the price per hour. 1050 divided by, oh, not times. 1050 divided by 220 is 477, 4.772. My standard price for uh, variable overhead, well, let's see. My manufacturing overhead is $8 per direct labor hour, but that's total, right? That's variable and fixed. So I want a rate for variable, and as I read down, oh, there's more information here, a whole paragraph about overhead. Lucky us. Uh, the company estimates variable overhead to be $5 per direct labor hour. I would say that's our standard uh uh, hourly for um, variable over it. So $1,100. The difference here is 50 bucks. Now again, looking at, at what's different. We spent five bucks an hour, or we spent 477 an hour. We expect to spend five bucks an hour. We were cheap. This is good. This is favorable. Over to the last one, SQSP. Well, we have our SQ already. Our SP, 250 times 5 is 1250. Uh, and the difference here is 150 bucks. And again, we've got to look at what's different between the two calculations. And it's this it's the hours, 220 hours versus 250 direct labor hours. We expect to spend 250 direct labor hours. We actually spend 220. We are efficient. And if the direct labor efficiency variance is favorable, and if variable overhead is based on direct labor, the variable overhead of efficiency variance will be favorable. It has to be, it just works that way. On to our final variance, fixed overhead variance. So there's this whole paragraph here, it kind of goes on and on. Um, here's what I know about overhead. I know bullet point four, and I know this paragraph are really what's going to come into play. So it says variable overhead of 1050 and fixed overhead of 800 were incurred. Okay, this is my actual fixed overhead, 800. So let's fill that in under actual fixed overhead. Uh, reading on, uh, the manufacturing overhead rate of $8 per hour can be further broken down. The company estimates variable overhead to be $5 per direct labor hour. Well, obviously then fixed is going to be $3 if, if we're breaking out, you know, each one per direct labor hour. Um, the company expected to produce 1,100 buckets using 275 direct labor hours during the month. So that was what they were planning when they made their original budget. And based on those estimates, variable overhead was budgeted to be 1,375. Fixed overhead was budgeted to be 825. Okay, so there's our budget. Uh, and fixed overhead is budgeted to be 825 for the month. 
Uh, so our actual fixed overhead was 800. Our budgeted fixed overhead was 825. This is good news budget. We spent less than what we would have planned, $25 favorable. Now, our applied overhead says, okay, but how well utilized were our facilities? And generally speaking, and I, I saw something here that kind of alarmed me. It said, look, we were planning to make 1,100 buckets using 275 hours. If we use more than uh, that, that's good for our fixed overhead. We like that. It's like using your ski pass more than you had planned. I always with the ski pass. Uh, if we use fewer than that, it's bad for our, our utilization. So I noticed that we did produce fewer buckets and we did it in 250 hours would have been our, uh, well, no, 220 hours. So we, we definitely used uh, many fewer hours than we would have planned and, and utilized our, our fixed costs then less than we would have expected. So I'm expecting a, a very unfavorable volume variance. So let's, let's see, uh, standard quantity. Well, again, our standard quantity is based on direct labor hours and our standard quantity of direct labor hours is 250. Our standard price is our fixed overhead rate and our fixed overhead rate was three, three bucks per direct labor hour. Um, I'll remind you on this 250, what that's based on, right? We actually made uh, a thousand units. So given that we actually made a thousand units, how many hours should that have taken? And that should have taken 250 hours. Okay, so 250 times three is 750. Comparing these two, this is a $75 uh, dollar variance, and this is an unfavorable fixed overhead volume variance. There we have it. We've computed all of our variances. Uh, definitely a handful of the question. I feel like it gets kind of harder towards the bottom, uh, but you know, material, labor, variable, and fixed overhead variance, I hope are all within your grasp at this point. Stay tuned for our next video.